I'm going to share my screen the entire time. Um, we are recording this, so um, I'll be able to uh, send you uh, a PDF of the notes at the end, but there'll also be a screen recording if you want to go back and look at um, the steps as, as we as we go through it. Um, and if you have any questions, please interrupt me um, or message me through uh, through the chat there. Uh, just you know, this this time is really all about you, so it's it's whatever you need to uh, to, to have this make sense. But I'll uh, I'll do my best here to to try and explain that for you. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm going to snip in this first question that you sent me. Um, if you see my screen, uh, just let me know that you do see that. H of yeah, X. Great. So on the right here, this this bubble, I call it a bubble. It means composition. Have you seen that in class? Yeah. Okay, so this this literally means G of H of five. And the first thing you actually do is is the inside part here. You you want to find h h of 5 so h of 5 means to take 5 and put it in for x so wherever you see an x in this case uh, the x is right there you're going to put 5 in for x so 5 minus 7 now normally we would we would actually subtract that but but the answer space here is a little bit odd um, we so we're just going to leave it like that the next part is to do the G. So you, you take the output, you take the output of this or whatever this answer is, which which we know is negative two, but they want you to leave it in this format. And you take this and G of X, G of X is X squared. You're going to take this five minus seven and you're going to put it in for X. So it's G of five minus seven is parentheses five minus seven squared. You put whatever the output is here, which we know is negative two, but they want you to leave it in this five minus seven format. And, and this, this is, your, is your final answer here. Okay. Okay. Now, do you want me to give you a problem like this uh, to work on on your own? Do you, wanna, do you want us to just move through the rest of this? I, I, give, me a, give me some feedback. Um, what would be help, most helpful for you? Um, there's some other questions like this in the problems that I have, and I would go over, like to go over it again, because I'm still like, I understand what you're saying, but I'm still confused also. Got it. Got it. Okay. I'm going to actually do question four next, and we're going to get to all of them, but uh, this one makes the most sense to do next, because it's kind of like the last one in terms of the steps. Okay. Okay. And we'll, we'll just go back and do the others. All right, so it says here, if g of x equals, and, and probably instructor meant parentheses around these uh, with the division symbol there. Um, so really it's, it's like x plus one over x minus two. Um, this time they want you to find g bubble h or g of h of negative three. So you, you start, your first step is to find h of negative three, like whatever that is. So. We're going to write h of x. We write h of x because we want to find h of negative 3. h of x is 4 minus x. And you want to find h of negative 3. This means wherever you see an x, and there's an x right there, you're going to put in negative 3. Now, my preference is to show substitution in parentheses. When you substitute, put it in parentheses. It'll help with signs. Um, I haven't worked with you before, but some students really struggle with this. Um, and, and I would pick up on that as we work, uh, work through some more problems. But um, this is key here. You got to be able to, to simplify this one. So 4 minus a minus 3 is 7. Is that, is that OK? Is that clear? Yeah. OK. So now that's, that's the first part. The second part. Is, is you take the output, the output of h of negative three, and you use that in g. So, so because we found that value to be seven, we're gonna find g of seven. You take the output from the previous line and find that. So we're gonna, we're gonna write g of x, g of x is x plus one over x minus two. And then you wanna find g of seven. The reason it's seven, again, is because that was the output from the previous uh, problem previous part of this problem. Okay. So now you're going to put seven in wherever you see an X. That's seven plus one. 
over seven minus two. Now I did not put it in parentheses. It's generally only when there's a negative that you put something in, in parentheses. Okay. So now you evaluate the top eight and then you evaluate the bottom five. Oh, okay. So this is your final answer. This is your final answer. Okay, so I guess I guess it's, it's letter A, at least for one and four. That makes a lot more sense. When I did it, I got um, like 13 over eight or something like that. And I couldn't find it. So then I thought 15 over two is closer to it. So yeah, yeah. I didn't do so well by myself. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you feel like you could replicate these steps? Like, do you feel like you understand what I wrote down here, I, I said, hey, you've got to do this H of negative three first, then you take the output from it and you got to find the next the next one. I think I understand that. Okay, great. Um, a lot of math is, I don't know if you like to cook or bake, but it's it's really recipe based. You, you have step one, step two, so on. And, and that's, that's really what we're doing here. So we're going to do seven next. Again, we're going to get through everything, but um, this one again, works out really nicely because it's a numerical answer. Um, your final answer is a number when you're all done. So um, this notation here on the top right means f of g of 10. Now I have not said it, but, but g, whatever the second letter is, it goes on the inside. The first letter goes on the outside. Okay. So the, so the first thing you need to find is g of 10. So to do that, g of x is x minus four. What is g of 10? Will you, will you work that out for me? Six. It's 10 minus four, which equals six. Perfect, okay? So that's, that's step one. Step two is you wanna find f of, so this six, because it's the output from the previous part, it's now the input of the next part. So whatever you get for g of 10, which in this case is six, you use that in the other function. Okay. Okay, now um, I like to write the function, let me see here, I didn't quite get enough room here. Um, I want, I, I'm gonna write the function above it, f of x is x squared plus one. So again, wherever you see an x, wherever you see an x, you're gonna substitute in this six. So it's six squared plus one. What does that equal? 37. 37. So it looks like it's always answer A. <laughs> Three in a row on that. The answer C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go back and look at number. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna do two next. We will do three. Uh, um, uh, we'll look at three next because it's uh, these are these are non-numerical questions. It's the same style of question but without a number, and uh, we'll see if that makes more sense. Here, I'm actually going to snip it in without the answer space this time, and okay. uh, uh, we'll just work through it uh, together here. Um, there we go. Get that in the right space there. Okay. All right. So it says uh, here's f of x. Here's a g of x. And then this, this again, we see this yet again, F bubble G, you're doing composition. By now, I hope you can see that that's F of G of X. Yes, I understand that. Okay, so this one's different though. There, it, it, there's no numbers this time. Like the previous problems, there was a number there. The numerical ones are easier. Easier meaning like they just, they're, they're more straightforward. You, you get a number out. We like numbers when we were doing this class. So what is G of X? Well, it's given. It's given, it's x squared plus one. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay, so this is where this is where it's a little bit awkward. F of x is three x plus two. So g of x is, is this part that I'm circling right here. Yes, it's this, this thing on the left here, but it's, it's x squared plus one. So what you do is you put that in wherever you see an x. Um. You, you literally replace it. So it's, and when you replace, you generally want to do it in parentheses. So it's three parentheses, x squared plus one plus two. Sorry, I've got an extra parentheses there. Okay. 
Okay, so like like let's say this was x squared plus x, you would you would put in you would replace for x x squared plus x, whatever you, you whatever g of x is, you you take it and you replace for x. Okay, so uh, now now we need to simplify. Is there a question there? No, I just am coming to the realization I understand it a little bit better now. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's great. Um, so a little bit of simplifying here. Um, let me actually see if the answer, the answer is uh, actually the correct answer. Uh, this is the final answer, it looks like. Uh, yeah, it looks like letter C or letter D is the, is the way. But normally, see, normally you would distribute this three to both. Have you seen that before in class? Maybe. Yes, but I don't really understand it. Okay. Um, We'll, we'll talk about that maybe maybe we get done with all these other questions but um, in terms of like what the what the answer is here the, the final answer to three let me just grab these the answers here um, it's also quite odd that like they're not they're not labeled but it's the it's the last one there okay okay all right so let's look at number six um, because it's really similar so when you're learning something new like this for the first time, you really want to do uh, similar examples. Um, that way you can kind of take from the previous problem and, and say, okay, what, what can I, you know, what did I do in the previous problem? Because I'm going to do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. okay, so let me get rid of this. All right. So this one is P composition Q, P of Q of X, P parentheses Q of X, like this. Yeah. So you're going to start start with q of x. What is q of x? Well, it's x minus three. That it's given. So th this is what you're working with here that I've circled x minus three. So p of x, p of x is two x squared minus four x. Okay, and that, again, that's given. The, what this composition says is take whatever q of x is, and wherever you see an x, you replace it. Okay. Okay. So the way this looks is it's two parentheses x minus three squared. It's 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 always good to replace with parentheses minus four parentheses x minus three. So again, uh, I, I I just took I just took whatever q of x is whatever whatever because your problem on your test or quiz will be a little bit different. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's whatever the second thing is, you take that and you replace it wherever you see an X in the other one. Okay. Okay. So it's, so it's, it's not any more complicated than that. Let me see if we need to simplify. Yeah, we do need to simplify this one. So we'll get to test some other skills yeah. here that you have. Um, all right. So let's do this uh, one thing at a time. So on where, when it says X minus three squared, one term at a time here, the best way to do this is to rewrite it this way. X minus three squared means it's X minus three times X minus three. Uh -huh. Minus four times X minus three. Okay. So just this part, let me change colors here and switch to blue. Uh, just this part here. Do you remember how to foil that? Have you seen that before? I've seen foil, but I don't understand it. Okay, so we'll, we can we can definitely talk about that. Um, I'll, I'll work this out with you. Um, let me send you something here real quick. I've got a, uh, a foil reference sheet that we'll look at together. And um, you may find it uh, helpful here. Give me just a moment to pull that up. All right. Copy link. All right, so I'm going to just send you in the chat here. It's just a link to a FOIL reference sheet. We're going to we're going to um, work this out together, and uh, you can you can. Um, yeah, so, um, FOIL means the following. Oops. FOIL is is you've got a first term, first times first. Mm -hmm. O is the outer. I is the inner. And L is the last, but that's not particularly helpful. What is what is helpful is is the image here. So I'm going to snip in this image, and hopefully, 
hopefully this will be will make more sense here. So it's slightly different numbers than you've got, but first literally means you take whatever's first and you multiply the firsts together. Okay. So, so in your problem here, and I've got a lot of writing here. Actually, let, let's 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 take this down here. Um, so it's not. So we got a little bit less stuff on the screen here. Okay. So your f is x times x because that's your first. Is that okay? Is that clear? Yeah, I get that. Okay. Your O is the outer. Your outer means the outside. X times negative three. X times negative three is negative three X. The inner is negative three times X. Okay, which is negative three X. And then the last is negative three times negative three, which is nine. Now it is usually the case that you can combine these Okay, so it's, it's x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. These two inner terms, they, they combine to x squared minus 6x plus 9. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll do some more FOIL later, but um, if, if that wasn't clear, we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, but this, this line right here, let me just, I got to grab it one more time here. This, this FOIL part, we, we uh, reduce to x squared minus 6x plus 9, but there's this 2 on the outside. Oh, so we leave the 2? We're going we're gonna to multiply it in, okay. but uh, the, like we have to do one thing at a time. Uh, mm -hmm. it, so in, it, so the, you just said here, we're going to multiply each of these by 2. Okay, now, now I've, now I've pointed at the x squared, but it's, it's two x squareds because because there's really a one in front. Um, two times negative six is negative twelve x. Two times nine is eighteen. Mm -hmm. Now the one on the right's a little bit more difficult. It says minus four, but you can treat this as a negative four. Have you seen that before in class? Yeah. Like it's really plus minus here. So negative four times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Right. OK, so now, now you can combine like terms. And, and this is kind of its own lesson, believe it or not. So like terms. So for example, minus 12x can go with minus 4x. OK, what, this what? is something I do understand, at least. OK, so that's minus 16x. And then plus 18 goes with plus 12 to make plus 30. Okay. And then you just bring down this last term here. Mm -hmm. So this problem definitely re required you to remember a lot of things from, you know, previously in this class or a, yeah. another class. Is there anything about this problem that you would like me to explain again? I mean, no, I'm still a little bit confused about the foil, but um, right. yeah. besides that, no, I think I understand what you're doing. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so let's look at question two now. Mm -hmm. Question two. Okay, if, if, uh, oh, sorry. So this first one is not written well. Let me rewrite this. F of X is X minus three over X and G of X is five X minus four. Okay, it wants to know the domain of F of G of X. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so th th there's, um, th there's actually a lot here. This is, this is, you know, th th this is like a loaded question. There's many things to consider, but, um, if we just do this the same way as the previous problem, you, you identify g of x. Do you see g of x there? Yeah. Now, f of g of x means to take this and wherever you see an x, replace it. Oh, that makes that really complicated. Yes, I mean, but- Fractions are always complicated. But. Of course, but, but do you, is it clear though, I'm, wherever I see an x, instead of writing x, you're gonna write 5x yeah. minus four minus three. And it's the one closest to the x in the equation because yeah. it's f g x 
That's so right. And then on the bottom here, wherever you see an X, 5X minus four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not done, but but um, like like this, the, we've done this a couple of times now. This this f of g of x, you take the 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 thing that's on the inside, which is the second letter here, and mm -hmm. you you take it and you replace. You always replace. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now on the top we can combine like terms. Do you see how you can combine minus four and minus three? Yeah. And on the bottom, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So this would be correct if this if the question just said like what is f of g of x? Okay, but it but it wants the domain. Okay. Okay. So when you're when you're considering the domain, there's there's like two things in math that you never want to do. One is divide by zero. Have you heard that before? No. Okay. Division by zero is is like like this horrible thing that happens in math. Um, the other one is the square root of a negative, you probably haven't seen that yet, but divide by zero, you can never divide by zero in math. Okay, so do you see how this is division here? You already mentioned that. Yeah. So we so we need to figure out, well, what when is the bottom equal to zero? Okay. So you literally set the bottom equal to zero. Okay. And solve for X. So I'd like you to try that. Can you solve this equation for X for me? Yeah. Take 30 seconds, minute, whatever you need and see if you can solve that. X equals four fifths. X equals four fifths. Great. So, so this is not entirely like like what you did is completely perfect. But what this is, this is where remember we asked when is the bottom equal to zero, or for what value of x is the bottom equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So when when x is four fifths, you divide by zero. Um, so so, the, so okay. the domain, the domain, and, and I'm just going to write this in words, and then we can you can tell me how you're doing this in class. But the domain is everything but x equals four fifths. Mm -hmm. Okay, now are you guys in, do you know if you're using a set builder notation? Do you know if you're using interval notation? Okay, so I've heard both of those before, but I don't really understand them. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, yeah, well, there's a lot here because, uh, you know, sets, you've never heard, you know, you're not using sets very often and intervals. Intervals are usually shown later. Um, you probably saw this. I'm just going to write it and then we can talk about if this is something that you saw in class. Is this, is this maybe something you saw in class? This is set builder. No. Okay, let's try interval. So interval would be minus infinity. Four yes. Fifths. Okay. Yes. That one I have seen. Okay. So here, here's how I got that. Imagine this number line represents all the numbers from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. We have we we have said that it's everything but four fifths. Mm -hmm. like, you, like you like everything is good except four fifths. So I'm just going to arbitrarily say that's four fifths. So everything from negative infinity all the way up to four fifths is okay, but not four fifths. And then everything just past it to infinity is okay. Okay. So this notation here, it describes that. Do you see how it's oh, negative infinity to I four did fifths? It because it stops at four fifths. Right, right. And then it restarts after four fifths. Exactly, it stops. And I like your, I like your words there, restarts. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's look at number five. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm gonna send this to you, I'm gonna send this to your dad as a PDF um, right, right after the lesson. And uh, you can, um, you can I mean, it's great that you're copying this down if you are, um, but if you miss anything, you know, you'll get that right away. So new question here, it says the domain 
of f of x, that's what we were just talking about in the previous problem, yeah. is the set of all real values except seven. Okay, that means that means it's excluded. And the domain of g of x is the set of all real values except negative three. So on a number line here, just to kind of continue what we talked about in the previous problem, mm -hmm. here's negative three and here's seven. And if, if you count later, they're probably not exactly 10 apart, but um, you know, let's just go with it. So it's minus infinity to infinity. Mm -hmm. So this means everything from minus infinity all the way up to minus and three, but it, but it stops there. Mm -hmm. And then it restarts, restarts here all the way up to seven, but then it goes to infinity. Okay. So it's parentheses minus infinity minus three. This U means union. Union just means or. I don't know if you. I don't know if you're learning any foreign languages, yeah, but, but there's there's a there's a translation here, um, mm -hmm. math speak, and then minus three to seven. Union seven to infinity. Okay. So do you see how for each of these places that I've 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 like scribbled, there's a corresponding parentheses for it yeah i get it's, that it's, it's always that way okay okay so in terms of in terms of your answer which is slightly different than this we're, we're basically saying it's everything but negative three and seven everything but negative three and seven so that's looks like it's letter a here uh, um, if you do need to highlight that but this is an interval notation and then this is just in words, kind of a description. Okay. All right. So we have uh, we have covered everything but eight and nine. Um, we can stop here. We can keep going. I don't know if your dad's still still there. Um, yes, I'm I'm learning too. Oh, oh great, <laughs> oh, great. Um, we can keep going. We can also do some more. Uh, we can spend some additional time on um, uh, foil uh, or stop here. It's up to you guys. Um, you know, just let me know what you'd like to do. Um, let's finish off with the questions she has, if we can, please. Sure. Let's do that. All right. So I'm going to snip in question eight. All right. Emma, are you still there with me? Yes. Great. Okay. So this is uh, this is the type of question you might see on like uh, a standardized test. It's it's a story problem. I do not like these questions. You're not alone. Most students don't don't like them. Um, there's a lot of strategies that we could talk about, but we're just going to work through it today. Um, this one's a little bit out of context for you, unless you already work a job, uh, because it's talking about taxable income and and things that uh, aren't aren't all that fun. But um, it says 15 percent of an employer's taxable income is collected each paycheck, okay? Mm -hmm. So before taxes are removed from each paycheck, $350 of tax exempt income is taken out, okay? Um, so what that means is, is, is that like you, you start with some money, your income will say, um, like, and we don't know the amount, but um, they, they take $350, uh -huh. okay? Um, before taxes, okay. If the variable X, now they're giving us some words here. If the variable X represents the employee's pay before the tax exempt expenses are, taxes are removed, which expression represents the employee's take home pay after these deductions? All right. So it's really, there's really like, there's there's a progression here. So, so you get some income. That's, that's thing one that's happening here. Yeah. The second, Okay, is that they they deduct this tax exempt income. Okay, and then the third thing is is they 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 take fifteen percent uh, for taxes. Uh, they they call that taxable income, or they take they they're taking this out as taxes. It's actually written quite oddly. Let's just keep it simple here. Um, so uh, for for taxes, so. Let's go with that. So let's just say, let's just say uh, you make a thousand dollars a week. Okay. Uh -huh. They're saying the very first thing you always do, you always take $350. Okay. 
That's so she, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot. Uh, so there's 650, but the, of the 650, they now take 15% for taxes. Depending on your tax bracket, could be higher, could be lower, but um, they're saying in this case, it's 15%. So you have to take 15% and you multiply it by this number. Okay. Okay. Um, if you don't have a calculator handy, I will do this calculation for you. 15% of 650 is $97.50. But the thing here, and this is this is where it could be a little bit unclear, is you're just paying that. So what you actually end up taking home, you subtract 97.50. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I don't like this, but we're gonna we're gonna we're just, we're gonna do it um, a little bit differently. So um, you, you can get that number, whatever it is, but um, we've got to come up with an equation for this. So whatever whatever you start with, you always deduct 350. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you see, see how it says here? Let let the variable x represent the employee's pay. Mm -hmm. So we're not able to pick a number. We've got to say, okay, X minus 350. That's that's always going to happen. It doesn't matter how much you make, you lose 350. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Now you might think the correct answer is to to multiply this by 15%. Okay. Yeah. But but this but this doesn't get but see how this but see how this gives us 97.50? Yeah. That's not what you're getting. So What's, what sometimes isn't clear is that there's actually two things. When you multiply by 0.15, that's the tax. 0.85 is what you get to keep. Oh. So when you're, when you're looking at this problem here, we, we go, like as, as when you work, you only care about what you take home. You, don't, you, don't, you do care about the taxes, but you're more interested in this 85. So it's not 0.15, it's 0.85. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's really confusing, but it I is, it what is. you're saying. Okay. And, and probably no reason to spend any more time on that other than to just, just uh, you know, if we're going to do another one, um, I'd probably write it a little differently. But let's, let's get to nine here and see if we can uh, close this out here. So nine says, if u of x equals minus 2x squared plus 3 and v of x equals 1 over x, what is the range, the range of u of v of x? So this is different, okay? But let's see if we can, let's see if we can do this together here. So what is v of x? v of x is one over x. Right, and it's the, it's the inside one, it's the inside function. Right. So when this minus two x squared plus three, you take this one over x, and put it wherever x is seen. Exactly. So it's negative two times one over x squared plus three. So if, so if this is as far as you can go, like that, that's good. Like like you really understand uh, understand this. Okay. okay. All right. But now we're going to do a little bit of simplifying here. Um, so when you square something like this, a fraction, you actually yeah. square the top number, and then you square the bottom number. Okay. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Okay. So when you square one, you get one. Mm -hmm. When you square x squared, it's x squared. And then it's negative two times this. So you multiply negative two times the top number. So that's negative two over x squared plus three. Now we're interested in the range. Okay. I'm going to new share my screen with uh, a graphing calculator there. Okay, so if you're seeing my screen, you're seeing some absolute values, but I'm gonna cancel those out here. Have you seen this before, this, this thing, this Desmos? Yeah. It's really a great tool. So I am graphing the function here. Do you see, do you see that in your screen? It's yes. It's gonna go down, okay. So the range, which is what this question is asking for, it's like, it's, it's really asking what are the Y values? So how far down does this graph go? Do you know? I just see to negative 15. But, but it keeps going, right? If I, if yeah. I keep, it actually goes down forever. Like, right. like, do, like do you believe that? Or, I mean, I, I can zoom out, but it, it just goes down forever. Yeah. But it, does, but it doesn't go up forever. Like, like do you see how it kind of flattens out there? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. What Y value does it kind of flatten out at? Uh, three. Yeah, right there at three. 
So what I'm going to do here is let me just snip this back into our workspace, and then we'll we'll talk about what the answer is. But if you're ever unsure what something looks like, go ahead and graph it. A picture is always a great way to work through a problem. Mm -hmm. So let me go back and new share that window. There we go. Okay, so the range is the y values. And, and, and you just told me, you said, I said, how, what's the smallest y value? And you said, well, you said, you initially said like negative 15. And I think I convinced you that it goes down to negative infinity. Yeah. Which, what's the largest y value? Three. Three. So there's your range. Oh. The range is always the smallest to the largest, or if you prefer like min to max. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like, what is the correct answer? What would you say there looking at that answer space? C. Yep. Yep. You got it. All right. Okay. All right. Um, if, your dad, if, if your dad's still there, we could uh, talk to him. Um, answer yeah, your question. So this is, uh, this is the format of the lesson. Um, I, I introduce technology as I need to. Um, I really like the, this, these tools, but um, you know, I would normally want to do a few more problems uh, on the different types of composition to just kind of keep like emphasizing, like, this is how you do it. This is the recipe. These are the steps. Sure. Uh, so it, but it's also based on the student. Like if students is like, nope, I just need to get through this. You know, we just, we just go through it and, and we're done. Um, but obviously you saw there, like your daughter said, Hey, uh, I don't, I don't really understand. Remember this foiling thing. Um, you know, we would, we could, we could either stop the lesson and start working on that, or we could do that uh -huh. at another time. Um, but you know, that, that's, you know, that's, that's the service here. It's like, what do you guys want to work on? You dictate, you know, what we should do. And I just need a topic or some problems like this. And, and we sure, sure. Go through, go yeah. through it. I mean, um, yeah, this was, was great. It seemed like it helped her out a lot. She, and then maybe like uh, we can spend a few minutes each time going over like like foil or like something that that maybe will help her build her skills that maybe she missed in the last yes. week or so. Yeah, um, the, you know this is very immersive. So like she could be very tired at the end. I don't know how she's feeling right now, but but you know they're staring at a screen. I know I know students do that all day with phones and things like that. But like it's kind of different when you're in there doing problems. So it's normal right. for for them to be like, oh my gosh, I'm like exhausted after 40, 45 minutes of this. But that, so I keep the lessons to 50 minutes um, for that reason. Um, I also need a, a short break. But um, you know students like to get into a habit of like pattern of like you know, once a week, a routine, whatever you guys want is fine with me. Um, most of the time, you would just schedule through the website. If you need an appointment and you don't see anything available, you could text me or call me and I'll, I'll try to, you know, fit it in um, if I can. Or, you know, if you need, if there's a special circumstance where you need a different time, I'll do my best to, to try to accommodate that. Okay. Do we, and then like to, to, it's like, it's $35 for a Zoom, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, and do we just pay through the website or? Uh, for today, I'll just send you an invoice if you're okay with it. I'll just bill you for a half hour. Um, if you want to stop here, it's fine with me. Um, I'm, I'm obviously hoping you guys will schedule again and, uh, you know, no, we'll be out for the rest. Schedule. We'll definitely schedule again. Yeah, I think I'm just Excellent. bill me for the half hour and then I can talk to her and see how often she wants to do this. Yes. Um, this will help her, you know, get through. <laughs> I mean, it's her last year of math, so hopefully Great. there's a Get her help get her through this last year of math because I'm I'm lost. Yeah, and and like we talked about, it's usually easier when it's not a parent and and uh, it's, it's someone kind of you know not her age, but it's a peer, someone not a peer, it's someone in the middle that you know. Yeah, you, know, you can see like I enjoy this. I like helping students, and and you know, we'll, you'll, you you will see an improvement in the grade if you stick with consistent um, tutoring lessons. You know, once or okay. twice a week is almost everyone sees an improvement. <laughs> um with that and i think we're going to give once a week a shot and see how she how she does if she needs Great. more then we'll add it then awesome well, is there anything else i can answer for you guys do you have any other questions Emma? no that makes a lot more sense now I did see a light bulb click over her head. So. <laughs> All right, that's great. So I, I sent, I, right after the lesson, I send a PDF of the notes and then I upload the screen sharing to YouTube, my YouTube channel. I send you a link to it so you guys can look at it later if you want. Um, it's, it's just there as a resource. So you're getting that added value of like, okay, what did I do? Like if she's prepping for an exam, you could just have her watch the video and see, see if it work out the problems again, see if she can do them.
Okay, and then we printed out the foil so she could use actually, that. And then the, there's and actually, then uh, let me just real quickly, there, I've actually got a, a, a free worksheet that I can send you guys to uh, a link to, to, to work on. Um, sure. So let me do that. Let me do that now. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. I noticed you use a, a, a website called desmos.com. Yeah. Uh, for like graphing and stuff like that. She has like a 200 something dollar graphing calculator that neither one of us know how to do <laughs> because it's yeah. you know, got like math instructions to it. So is Desmos like something I could go on to maybe pay for? And It's totally free. Uh, I like paying for stuff when you need to. It's totally free. I I have the ability to show, you, show her how to use the, the TI-83 calculator. Let me show you that first. Let me actually, let me, let me do, let me get you this link to the worksheet. Okay, um, she's going to go get the, the calculator just so I can tell you what model it is. I mean, this right, thing so, is expensive now. It's basically a paperweight. So. Yeah, um, you know, there's some tie-in with the schools and legacy technology. Uh, I yeah, I won't speak any more to that, but let me show you what I what I've got here to help you guys with with that. So there, like, there is a time and a place for using a calculator. The Desmos is really cool. It's got colors. It does so many different things that you would expect. Like we all have smartphones. We expect certain things out of technology. And the calculator is like going back and turning on a tube TV. It's just we wouldn't do that. But let me get this uh, tool up, uh, and then I'll share it. So it's not a it's not a TI eighty four it's not a, it's a, this is a TI eighty three let me share this with you guys um, but what I'll be able to do is show her how to how to like do some things in that calculator where she can follow along and she can graph you know x x squared you know plus one I can show her how to do that or or whatever we end up doing I don't like using this but that is what they're using in the classroom um, it's very antiquated but that's, that's okay, yeah doing. I think hers is a little bit more advanced than that. yeah. Um, yeah, but this, it, it's the same, it's the same calculator in terms of it's like function. So I'll be able to help her whenever that time comes with this. Okay, great. Yeah. So I appreciate it. And then, um, if we need help with, I know you said you don't really do high school, but if my eighth grader needs help, is that oh, absolutely. So, okay. so no, another thing you guys can do is you can, you can, you're paying for the time. So if you want to say, okay, we're in the first half hour with Emma, the second half hour for the eighth grader or vice versa, whatever you guys want to do is fine. Okay. Um, you know, or just maybe because the eighth grader's never done this, maybe just spend the last 10, 15 minutes with, with that, um, with that student and, you know, see if it, but I, I help of all levels. It's it, most students, once they get to high school, that's where the, and college, that's where I, you know, do a lot of the, the bulk of the work is there. Yeah. He's starting to get into angles and stuff like that. And I never was good at that. So I just, want to make sure that he's getting the help he needs and then like uh you know surface area of like cones and sure and yeah cylinders. absolutely absolutely all right uh matt well i appreciate your time and i'll uh you know i'll go online and schedule another thing and if you want to send me an invoice for tonight i'll, I'll get you paid. absolutely absolutely thanks for letting me help you out emma good uh good luck in class and i'll see you next time all right thanks matt okay bye now bye